Uh, you know, you actually have to find that in another way in your identity, yeah. and that's the huge challenge. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. as a single, you have a choice. You have, you have a choice either way, and you can go through singleness one way or the other, and mm -hmm. at different times, we make different choices. I can't say I always made the, the perfect choice perfectly, but some people, when we watch it, even as singles we see, some people make the choice to be lonely and desperate and, and scared yeah. and miserable, <laughs> yes. and, then, and then they make bad choices with the men that they mm -hmm. date and with yeah. themselves and right. respecting themselves, and then it sets you up for the wrong guy every single time they I see it. They kind of slip into a desperation mode, yeah. like I just and have to, anyone, can, and anyone, who up. finds me yeah, attractive must be. and neediness. Yeah. And for guys, mm -hmm. they can pick that up and they're like, it's stay away. It but, is. Yeah. but the other choice is that, you know, um, if God's called me in this season of my life as a person of faith to be single, then there's a way that I can be satisfied mm -hmm. with my life mm -hmm. in this season, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And actually, I think um, I really found that as a single person, you know, I found so much peace. I'm talking the past tense only because I'm dating, not married. Mm -hmm. I still am single, I guess, you know, but um, there's just this way that I think God can be your husband. Mm -hmm. He can be your boyfriend and you press, you can press into God in a way that married people never really have the time or, or the desperate need to do yeah, in yes. a sense, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're lonely in a marriage, I think that could happen as well, but you're not distracted. And that's what Paul talks about in the Bible. He mm -hmm. says that it's better yeah. to be single than to be married. And I don't, you know, I don't want to elevate one over the other. talking about for himself. Speaking for sure, for and I don't want to elevate one over the other, but I want to say, can we elevate singleness a little, a little bit? bit more. Understand. Yeah. And I think, and I think it a little more. elevate community, what Anne was saying, because I think, you know, when Paul said that about, you know, it's better to be single, it's that he had purpose and he had, you know, this is what my, my, my purpose is, but he was always with community and people around. And I think that's key in singleness that, mm -hmm. you know, the loneliness that you choose is only because you choose it, but that you need to choose community so you don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. I've seen vibrant single communities with married people that go out and do things. And people have said, I never felt alone, even being a single person, because I always had those kinds of connections. Yeah. Also, that's key. Go ahead. I, also, I was gonna say that, you know, take this time of singleness to, again, cultivate your passions, you know? Mm -hmm. I think for me, one of the things that really Really, um, upsets me or makes me sad is you know obviously Denise you talked a little bit about the hierarchies particularly in Christian communities where singleness is kind of like you know the state that you don't want to be in but what happens is you have so many women who are essentially waiting for a day before their life begins, you know, like what, what you said, Cheryl. And so you have like churches full of women who have no idea what their passions are, no idea what their, their talents are, no mm -hmm. idea what their gifts are in God. And it's like, you have this season of, yeah. of time to to figure that out. And mm -hmm. there's so many people who, who need help, who need a hand, who need a friend, you know oh, what I mean? Absolutely. It's like, why not, instead of, yo, woe is me, you know, another Valentine's Day, it's like, yeah, you know what, let's see who else I can maybe connect with on Valentine's mm -hmm. Day and who yeah. else I can love, you know, maybe yeah. not necessarily romantically, but exactly. as a friend. And that's, we've put such an emphasis on romantic love like mm -hmm. that's the ultimate love mm -hmm. that's what I was and say. and um, you know like being single forced me to look at other venues like where I could express and receive love mm -hmm. and that was through my nieces and nephews that was through friends that was through missions work that was through using you know going to all of these broken places and so that was an area where I was able to to have that to have that kind of love but ultimately it comes from God and, and it was, mm. and that's still something I struggle with sometimes. Well, the movie Jerry Maguire, I think, you know, what what one line do all the guys remember from that movie? You know, show me the money. Yeah. What yeah. line yeah. do all the women remember yeah. from that you movie? You had me. You had You complete You had me at hello and then you complete me. And then me. you yeah. complete yeah. me. And really a lot of women think, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, Bridget, I won't be complete until I do get married. But what I hear you, Denise, saying is actually you find your completeness in God mm -hmm. first. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, what, one thing that really challenged me when I was single, I did a, it was back in 2003 and I had interviewed a girl who wrote this book called The Single Truth. And it really challenged me because it's like Cheryl said, so many times we put off living our life mm -hmm. until that day happens. And then it's like, we have all these dreams and everything in us, but we are waiting for that moment to happen so they can be released. Mm -hmm. Well, what if God isn't going to release that? And it's, it's dying mm -hmm. to that dream that you might have of marriage and saying, okay, well, if I never get married, what do I want my life to look like? Mm -hmm. And and then going and living. And I had been saving Italy, like travel to Italy for my honeymoon. I'd always said, I'll go to every other European country, but I don't wanna go to Italy because I wanna see that on my honeymoon. And after I read that, Cheryl and I had been talking about traveling and Italy was the place we were thinking of. And it was so hard for me at first to die to that dream that, okay, well, I may never get married. I may never have that honeymoon. So I need to start living my life now. Mm -hmm. And we went to Italy and, and it was like such a blessing to go. And, and I, God really ministered to me there. Like he really, I, I really did feel that, you know, he was, 
cheering me on that, yeah, Denise, live your life. Don't mm -hmm. hold back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just want to give a shout out to single people because single people can change the world. Yes. They have the resources, they have the time, they have the focus, they have the passion. Mm -hmm. We can change the world, you know? And so, yeah, like if people are watching today and they're just waiting for their life to begin, I just want to challenge people to say, go live your life and that you have significance. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you don't have a man or a woman, whatever side of singleness you're on, you have significance and you matter. Mm -hmm. Matter to the world and your life matters. Mm -hmm. But it takes all of us though, right? I mean, it's not just we go, go and make it happen on your own. Like, like we all have responsibility, all of us on the couch, to be a friend to somebody who's single, mm -hmm. to create mm -hmm. our own passions, and to to spend time to get closer to God. And I mean, you know what? I, I want to give a shout out to not just the younger single ladies, but the older single ladies. Right. I know when my mom, when my dad passed away a few years ago, my mom became a widow. It struck me one like the first Valentine's Day after my dad died. She has no one to buy her chocolate and to buy her flowers. Like this, mm -hmm. she is now alone after how many decades mm -hmm. of being married? And that's when I started reaching out to her. I would start buying her chocolates and sending her flowers and on her birthday, doing something extra special, not mm -hmm. just the happy birthday mom card, yeah. but doing something extra mm -hmm. special for her because, you know, the older single yeah. people and really so suffer too. Just they, on, it, lonely. But you just touched on widows. There's also divorce absolutely and that's single again and so I mean mm -hmm. so many of us have connections with these kinds of people that we need to just open up ourselves and be aware of that and see the need because they're mm -hmm. all around us and you know there's shame attached to all those things yeah. if, if you're divorced you feel judged if you're single and older you feel judged sometimes mm -hmm. if you're single and younger you feel judged if right. you grow up in a community or a family yeah. is always like get married get married get married yeah. mm -hmm. you know and we just need to like renounce that we need to push <laughs> yeah. that away and say there is no shame right. in this state in my life right now it's just a season or maybe it's my life it doesn't matter yeah. Right? Like yeah. there's mm -hmm. things that God has for you to do right now exactly. that matter. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say just really quickly is the, ha the, the incomplete, the complete me thing. I dated somebody once who said to me, I'm looking for my other half. And I just, I, I said to him, even in my 20s, I'm like, that's wrong. Yeah. Because, you know, two halves yeah. becoming a whole is, is a, a formula for codependency and dysfunction. Yes. And God, the miracle of marriage is that two whole people become one. That mm -hmm. is the miracle, which means as a single, you have to find a way to be whole in yourself and let God heal you, mm -hmm. let God restore you and become yeah. that person that's going to be that miracle for someone else. Yeah. And know? that's too much pressure. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> you're gonna, no, you're gonna, I'm going to be responsible for all of your yeah. happiness all yeah. the time. That's and all too much pressure. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. No exactly. Thanks, right? And to deal with your own stuff yes. now and don't exactly. wait for someone else that's to probably, fix you once you get married. That is probably the biggest gift you can give to any future spouse is getting, mm -hmm. working on your stuff now.